Anmund felt more than exhausted. The desire to scream increased with every minute, but she tried to hold on. She could not rely on the others for everything. Some things had to be done on her own. She had to be strong. She kept repeating that to herself, over and over again. Daphne flounced to a reclining position. She took great joy in observing the mortal shell of the woman she haunted. Her determination was truly commendable. She wondered just how much more the girl could take. The pain would eventually subside, but there was no telling when it would flare up again. She relished the idea that it would debilitate her as she tried to wake the sleeping dragons. In fact, she was counting on it. This was one more point towards her victory. The Dark Mage may not have been able to complete the ritual, but this was almost as good. And if she could cause the soul scars to flare, it would cause that much more chaos when the time came to reopen the gates. Overhead, the sky began to lighten as nighttime came to an end. With the increasing light, the pain finally began to subside. Anwen was more than a little relieved. She felt completely drained. Her body refused to move from her prone position on the forest floor. Her breath came in short gasps as she tried to reach for the canteen that lay several inches from her hand. Despite her best efforts, her fingers would not move at command. Daphne contemplated her nails as the light filtered down. Daylight. She mused. Guess that means someone will come looking for you soon. With that, she returned to the shadows of Anwen's mind, content to wait on developments. Anwen gave up on her efforts to reach the canteen. Instead, tears glistened in her eyes. She couldn't help but whimper at the phantom pain spikes that still lingered. Tyler felt the pain leave as they reached the island's shore, and with that his scales began to disappear. All the same, he felt exhausted in a way he'd never felt before. It was worse than feeling drained of energy. It almost felt as a part of him had been ripped apart and scattered to the winds, or at least thrown to the ground like littered trash. Walter jumped from the raft to pull it up onto the beach. Once the rubber had beached, the dragon all but rolled over the inflated walls of the craft. He then lay in the sand, feeling the sun against his skin. It was almost a relief to feel the fine grains press up against his back, reminding him he was alive. Seeing them from further up the slope, Courtney dropped the wood she'd set out to gather. Hey! She waved as she romped towards them. She came to a halt upon seeing Tyler lying like death warmed over in the sand. Looks like you had quite the night, she commented, wondering what had happened. She took in the scene, including the black rubber raft half filled with military gear. One might say that. Walter responded as he made sure the boat wouldn't drift back into the lake. He tied a long line to a protruding rock, prepared for that purpose. Courtney blinked in confusion as she watched, not sure how to take his comment. Deciding to wait for an explanation, she continued to close the distance between them. Hope you don't mind me coming to help, she said. I figured you could use it. That, and I wouldn't mind a break from Margot's insane training. She quickly glanced around her to make sure Anwen's mother wasn't within earshot. Tyler rolled over and propped himself up with an elbow. The help is appreciated, he smiled. But if you don't mind, I think I'm going to quickly cool off in the water. With that, he stood a bit shakily and headed into the lake. Walter watched his friend, giving him a once-over to make sure the previous symptoms had not returned. He didn't fear the dragon drowning. Tyler was an excellent swimmer and had the lung capacity of an elephant. Perhaps he just needed to cool down. Right. He said, turning towards Courtney. If you'd be kind enough to help me haul some of this up past the tree line, I'd appreciate it. Not sure what had just happened. Courtney reached to pick up one of the ammunition cans offered her. She kept an eye on Tyler as he plunged under the water. What's going on? She asked. Not sure she wanted to know. Glancing towards the lake, Walter shrugged. Steam hissed up from where Tyler had entered the water. Yeah. Long night. I guess he just wanted to wake up a bit. I'm sure he won't be long. He lifted up the canister and handed it to her, amused as she strained under the weight. What in the world do you have in these things? Courtney complained as she tried to handle the metal container. Explosives ain't light, you know. Walter commented with a <laughs> chuckle. He picked up two of his own canisters to carry. Shall we? Tyler dived deep under the lake's surface. The drop-off he'd located was several dozen yards deep and he relished in it. With open eyes, everything was tinged a blue color, and the cool water was more than helpful in restoring his energy. He'd always loved the water, even though he had not been born a water dragon. There was something pure about the liquid that felt a little like home. It was nice to not have to worry about the others for a few minutes, and at least for the most part. 
Just as he started to relax, the thought of Anwen shot him back to the surface. Even though the pain had stopped, he still did not know what had caused it. Had it really come from Anwen as his brother had hinted? And if so, why? He had to find out. Using strong strokes, he swam back towards the island. He'd moved further off than he'd originally intended. The beach he and Walter had landed on sat a good ways away. Not that it bothered him. He knew the island like the back of his hand. Soon he came upon a small section where the rocks dropped sheer from the land mass. He sprang backwards and grasped the rough top, pulling himself onto the shelf. Water sluiced off his body as he stood and oriented himself. From across the way he could see the mountain rising majestically. If the mages were still there, they made no sign. Satisfied, Tyler turned towards the island's center. Thankfully his scales had returned to flesh on his body before Courtney had met him on the beach. He still felt a lingering pain from the forced partial transformation, but if he focused he could distinguish a second palpitation in his chest that he thought came from Anwen. If the double pulse was indeed a reflection of her heart beating, he knew the recent trauma was over. The rhythm was too calm to mean anything else. Feeling reassured, Tyler turned his senses towards the camp. Nothing seemed out of place there. He let out a sigh of relief, and yet there was a niggling thought that wondered what had distressed Anwen. He turned towards her grove and headed out. The undergrowth was dense, as untouched now as it had been a hundred years ago. The foliage had taken advantage of the passing time. It had woven an even more complex path than what had existed before. Trees protruded in areas once bare. They made Tyler take a more circuitous route than he'd planned on using. The sound of giggling stopped him halfway to his destination. Pausing, Tyler looked around, but couldn't sense anything unusual. He took another step and the giggling came again. Whatever gave voice to the sound was young. He could tell that much, and was likely female as well. It was next to impossible for another mortal to be on the island. As such, he reasoned the giggling child must be draconic in nature, or at the least was somehow related to them. Speaking in the dragon tongue, Tyler focused on his surroundings. Reveal yourself! The command was met with more childlike <laughs> laughter. Come out, and I will do you no harm. Some leaves rustled in a low bush, and Tyler focused in on the movement. Walking as quietly as only one dragonborn can, he moved towards the foliage. I know you're out there. He continued, <laughs> speaking as one to a spooked animal. Show yourself. Having reached the shaking bush, Tyler parted the branches. What he saw caused his mouth to fall open. A young girl, no more than three or four years of age, stood near the central stump of the plant. She smiled with brilliant blue eyes, clothes and coloring to his own. Her dark red hair contrasted sharply with her white dress. The color of her clothes made her skin seem rosier than it might have otherwise seemed. Hello! Tyler ventured, bending down to her eye level. Who are you? Are you lost? The girl shook her head and put a finger to her lips. The look on her face made her look a bit puckish as she smiled. Mommy's sleeping. Tyler quickly looked around but still could not sense or see the presence of any outside his small party. Where is your mommy? He asked. I'm sure you've made her worry. Why don't we go find her? The child's countenance seemed to light up like a firework. She's over there. She pointed with her left hand, indicating some place to Tyler's right. It was further in from the shore. Looking in the direction she pointed, Tyler tried to see past the trees but couldn't. How did you get here? He asked, returning his attention to her. But when he turned back, he realized she was gone. Hey! A faint hint of giggling came from the direction she'd indicated. Tyler all but leapt towards the sound. He leapfrogged up the incline, following the infectious giggles. But no matter how fast he moved, he couldn't seem to catch up with her. Finally, Tyler had to pause, a bit winded from the chase. Looking around, he recognized the bounding circle that encompassed the sacred grove. Where are you? He asked the air not even sure if he'd gone in the right direction. Several yards inside the ring, a large stone protruded from the ground. The child moved out from behind the stone and stood next to it, arms down at her sides. It is the hour of the mage, she said, now looking serious. Tyler looked directly at her, realizing for the first time that he could almost see through her. It was as though she was like Callum or Kern, but he dismissed the idea. He did not recall any children among the dragons, leastways... Not any this young. Who are you? He asked again. The child smiled. And come, those dragonborn, mages of the land, and one to rule them from a foreign realm. Skills to learn or defy, while fire rains from the sky. She of dragon's soul 
to mend, else all dragon kind shall end. Tyler stared at her. Where did you learn this? Movement from the trees called his attention away from the girl before he could get an answer. From behind one of the larger trunks, a young woman appeared, almost as if she'd walked out of the living wood. Tyler couldn't move, let alone look away as he followed the woman's progress towards him. Well met, Damon Durand. The woman said as she stopped just inside the boundary circle. She was as translucent as the girl who ran over and gave her a peck on the cheek before running off into the trees. It has been a long time. Kata Magus. Tyler breathed in disbelief. How is this possible? You've been dead for centuries. Kata inclined her head as a gesture of respect, her knees bending slightly as she bowed. The flow of time has been disrupted. Both the past and the future are coming together. Unless things are set to rights, the flow will continue to erode. She of dragon soul to mend, else all of dragon kind shall end. Tyler watched the dragon mage with intense eyes as her red hair flared out like living flames. I've heard this saying before today, but I do not remember from where. Kata's eyes burned like molten amber. Strange that you cannot. You were there when it was given, but seeing through immortal's eyes for so long has likely dulled you. It is a prophecy from long ago, and now its time is upon us. My father knew this day would come, just as he knew that by becoming one with my mother, he might risk the future of his kind. Tyler felt as though a heavy weight had fallen on his shoulders. Knowing this, why did he not turn her away? He mused, but he already knew the answer and could not blame the near him for it. The first dragon mage shook her head, her hair fanning out around her. It was for the same reason you shared your soul with another. For love. True love is pure, without fault or blemish. It accepts all and magnifies the light within. But, as with all things, there must be an opposite. The dragon bowed his head in understanding. Fear. Love's true opposite is fear. Fear and envy. Kata smiled. As a mortal, I came to understand both emotions. I saw them, as did my progenitors. Hate and distrust came from them, and it is fear and envy that has brought us to where we are now. Yes. Tyler had to acknowledge her wisdom on the matter. Fear and the desire to control that which is feared. And over time, that fear became hate. Envying what they could never have. Forgetting the gift they were given was more than most ever receive. Kaida nodded. Yes. As such, the balance was lost. For there must be a balance between fear and love, between the darkness and the light. And that, as you are well aware, is young Onwen's task. Kern knew her destiny from the moment she was conceived. And that is why he did everything in his power to conceal her even from you until the time was right. Thinking of Anwen, Tyler couldn't help but let his thoughts take their own course. He mused on the possibilities. He must have used his gifts to hide her. It wasn't until I read her grandmother's journal that I really began to wonder who she was. Though, her coming to the mountain was certainly unusual enough to pique my curiosity. A sudden stab of pain brought back the night's happenings to mind as he went down to one knee. But unlike the night before, the pain did not last. On when He called out, breathless from the sensation. She was in pain! He looked towards Kata, his eyes liquid gold. Kata looked solemn as she nodded. I heard what Callum told you about soul sharing. It would seem there are more serious repercussions for that act of love. If I were among the living, I would partake of this sage's fruit and look into the future for you, but I cannot. An image of the square-stemmed plant entered Tyler's mind. He could almost see the velvet-like leaves, green on top but yellow on the undersides. The local mages called it by the more common name, Diviner's Sage. In the past, several mages had used it, unique properties to glimpse into the unknown. The process was risky and had left many blind or insane. It took one with a strong gift to handle the force of the visions the plant induced, and most who thought they had that gift ended up not having it. That's part of what made it so dangerous. What I don't understand is why that pain would return, Tyler confessed. I felt her heart at rest. She was calm not that long ago. I purged the poison from her soul. It shouldn't have come back. Not unless... He trailed off, looking into the distance with a sudden pensive attentiveness. I need to go to her. She may be in danger. Kaida reached out a hand. She will be fine. She assured. Onwen is not in any immediate danger. As I said, the lines of time are blurred. We are connected by blood. Just as wounds may scar the body, 
So might darkness scar the soul. Soul scars. Tyler breathed. Is it possible? The dragon mage nodded. The darkest of tools can scar even the purest of hearts, no matter what countermeasures are used to stop them. 